Hey gang, it's uh, Stu again from Ragnarok Survival, and today the scenario is that I'm actually heading up to a different location. I'm hours and hours away from my, my home, and I'm going to be there working for a week. So what I'm going to do now is go through my grab bags. I'm going to pull them apart, or I have pulled them apart. They're in pieces all over the floor, and I've got two different bags that I'm actually going to talk about, and I'm going to put them together and, and kind of uh, show you my rationale behind why I've gone through these sort of things. And how I'm repacking it, because it's important that we actually pack things like grab bags for the task that we're actually doing, for our own specific um, circumstances, for our own needs that, that we're going to do, and our own plans. Uh, so I see a lot of stuff out on the internet, like, yep, this is the, the X amount of items that you should have in a grab bag. And I'm like, yeah, you know, there's some good stuff out there, there's some good lists and things like that, but really, you need to think about what you need in your grab bag, what you're doing, what your goal is. Is it a grab bag? Is it a get home bag? Is it a you know, bug out bag? What, whatever it is, um, you know, think about what you are desiring to do, what your end state is, and then what kind of things you're going to use. Of course, you're not going to pack in things that uh, you might not know how to use. So it would be useless packing a huge med kit, for example, if you don't actually know how to do basic first aid. Um, I would start off by learning the skills first and then actually getting the equipment. And of course, you know, different areas uh, require different gear, different jobs require different gear. Like I'm in Australia now and I'm going out on a job, a task, it's a close personal protection task, it's basically a glorified Uber driver. But, um, you know, I'm not carrying any weapons with me. That's something I'm not doing. It's a very permissive environment, it's very low risk. But I'm always thinking about, okay, what's the most likely thing that can happen? What's the most dangerous thing that can happen to me? So let's uh, have a look at what we got here. Hopefully that camera stays there. Um, so on the gym floor, obviously, you know, in a nice clean space, not really, um, but you know, clean enough. Now this is some of the things, there will be other things that I'm actually gonna pack, but this is the basics that I've just pulled out of my current grab bags and I'm gonna rebuild. So two bags that I'm actually going to be creating here. The first one is one that's gonna stay in my personal vehicle and it's designed to get me from the city where I am towards home. So I, I will start to move and if, if I can do it in car, I'll be doing it by car obviously, but if not, then I'll have to do that on foot. So it's designed with that. That's the worst, worst case scenario there that I have to put that pack on my back and try and walk home, which is going to take probably about five to seven days, depending on the path that I'm actually taking. Okay, so I'm gonna start off over here. Um, oh, sorry, and I'll just talk about the other pack as well. The other bag is a much smaller bag. It's like a 10 liter bag that actually sits with me when I'm out with the client um, driving around. So that's in the car, as well as the gear that's already in the car, which is actually built uh, or put in there by the employer. So first off, I'm gonna talk about medical sort of stuff, med kits, a um, number of different kind of med kits you can get. I've got one here that I've built. This is my trauma med kit. So that's got tourniquets, that's got major bleeding sort of stuff in it that um, you, would, you would need for things like gunshot wounds. This is the sort of stuff that we would carry in the military. Um, so that's, that's pretty hectic stuff. And not a lot of people are gonna need that. I just like to have one of them just in case. And especially with things like uh, horrific car accidents, you know, tourniquets and stuff like that, being able to stop bleeding is very important. Uh, again, though, working on worst case scenario. Then I've just got a, an all-rounder kit. So this is a good uh, kit that, that covers off a lot of different things. And I've actually bought this kit off Survival First Aid. You can go check them out. They're an Aussie company. Um, and then I've fitted it out with a whole heap of stuff of my own as well. So I've kind of added to it. But, you know, this has got like masks for CPR, um, uh, dressings, bandages, uh, things for pulling out splinters. I've chucked some like gastro light in there. I've upgraded the uh, plasters or the band-aids in there. Um, I've added in other um, drugs and things like that. Not drugs specifically, but uh, over-the-counter sort of stuff. So your, your paracetamol, your ibuprofen, um, all those sorts of things whole gamut of them. And then I've got this one here, which is a much smaller, lighter backpacking one. So again, this, this covers off, these are actually quite good kits. This one's from um, Adventure Medical Kits. You can get them in a lot of uh, outdoor stores, but pretty clearly labeled medications, wound care, burns, uh, blisters, 
cuts and scrapes, stopping bleeding fast, and then all your instruments in there. And again, I've just padded these out a little bit with some of my own personal stuff. I never just buy a first aid kit and just leave it alone. So more than likely, this one here is actually going to be, uh, because this can support more than one person, and I'm thinking about the client, we do have a first aid kit in the vehicle that I'm using, but also, I'm also gonna pack that one uh, in there. And then gonna have this one probably in my larger bag with the trauma kit. Depending on how I'm feeling about the day, I might swap those around into different areas. Okay, next up, uh, next most important thing, water. So water, when I'm on the go, when I'm in the car, I'll usually have a water bottle, like just a bought one in there, but uh, I might also stick something like this, the life straw in there. So I can just fill that from any source. If, if we're pulled over somewhere, you know, the client's doing something, I've got a chance to just run out and I can see a tap somewhere or go into a public restroom or something like that. I can fill that up and that's gonna filter that uh, and give me nice clean water. The next step up, the grail. Um, now this one's quite handy because when you fill it up and you actually press it down and filter it, then I can actually pour that water out. Whereas I can't really do that with the life straw. So I can pour water out of that, filter it. And then I've got these two here, which are Cedar Summit um, water cells. So these are four liter water cells, these two here. Uh, and you'll notice that I've got this one marked with an X. So what I do, or what the theory is at least, is that this one is primarily used for dirty water. So if I have to just scoop up water and keep going, then I can scoop up water, chuck that in my backpack. I've got four liters there and I can strain it through that to filter it. Uh, or I can put purification tablets in it, filter it, and then put it into the clean one. So the clean one doesn't take any dirty water at all. On top of that, I've also got a three liter water bladder. So this is like a, um, well, it's called a water bladder. I was about to say a brand name then that we always call it in Australia. And I'm not going to, cause I don't want to promote them cause I have had bad experiences with them. But that's, that's a handy thing to have when you're on the go. I can fill that with water, put it in the backpack and continue moving so I don't necessarily need to stop and uh, rehydrate myself. All right, food. Next up, one of the more important things, I think. Uh, so two different types of food here. I've got freeze-dried meals that uh, need to be reconstituted. So obviously you put water and preferably hot water. This one here, Radix Nutrition, is a New Zealand company. Um, and I've got some other ones here which are actually... Uh, Norwegian that I've got over there. And then just a number of protein bars. So your yeah, keto type protein bars and one of these horrible tasting mini meal bars, but you know, they're, they're packed full of the stuff that you're gonna need if you're in an emergency and on the go. So I'll have a couple of bars in my car bag, in my like little get home bag, and the rest of the food is in here because that's obviously more long-term. I'm thinking, you know, five to seven days that I need to live out of that. So thinking about the water, uh, hot water going into this and cooking meals, I've got a little cook set here with some gas, eating utensils, um, lighter and things like that in there. So that I can actually cook or uh, purify water. I can heat water, cook that food, and that's all my food sorted. Uh, yeah, I mean, you can eat those things cold, but they're just pretty horrible. All right, electronic stuff, so communication things. In the car bag, I usually carry these sort of things. These are two watt radios, UHF radios. I'll carry two of them in an emergency in a pinch. I might not need to give one to one person, say my client or somebody like that, and then I'll have the other one so I can communicate with them outside of uh, phone communications. Uh, bigger sort of communications, this here uh, is Baofeng, uh, the 5VR, I think it's called, uh, UV5R. My apologies. Uh, I've got the upgraded battery pack on it and a larger antenna on it. So this is obviously gonna go a bit further. Now that's technically a ham radio or can be used as one, dual band radio. So that requires a bit of training and a bit of knowledge on how to use that. Otherwise, just stick to the UHF ones. Navigation and communication, this here, one of my favorite bits of gear. This is the Garmin InReach. So uh, the Garmin InReach Explorer, it's a SOS or a personal locator beacon uh, for emergencies. It's also got the ability to download maps onto it and you can use it just as a standard GPS. So pretty handy piece of gear, that one. You can also do uh, SMS messages through satellite. So good alternative comms there as well. Uh, light, so I've got kind of a smaller head torch, which is pretty you know, handy. Um, 
that's probably gonna go in the car bag, and then the bigger one is gonna go in my long-term bag or longer-term bag, and that's much more powerful, heavy-duty sort of uh, head torch there. Both these head torches have a red light on them too, which is something that I'm a stickler for. I think it just comes from my time in the army. All right, shelter sort of stuff here. I've got a number of options here. I've got the sports utility blanket. Uh, I've also got this silicon tarp here. I probably won't take the silicon tarp, I'm thinking. Out you go. Uh, I'll just take this. You know, I'm in Australia, I'm in a permissive environment. It doesn't matter that it's bright orange, I actually want to be seen. This is dual purpose. I can use it as a tarp, I can wrap it around myself, I can use it as a kind of BB bag as well. But just in case I wanted something else, I've got the, and that's from uh, SOL, so Survive Outdoors Longer, Survive Outdoors Longer Bivy as well, uh, the Escape Bivy. Just really small, lightweight. I mean, it's not tiny, tiny, but this is super lightweight. Like, this doesn't weigh a thing, so I don't mind it being in there. And then also, uh, see the Summit Tarp Poncho. So this doubles as a tarp or a poncho. So that's my wet weather gear, essentially, right there. Clothing, so I will beat the clothing out a bit because it's starting to get colder. So I'll be putting more thermals in here, but essentially a set of thermals, uh, good woolen socks, and a spare pair of underwear. Great, great things to have, especially in a pinch. And if I'm gonna be traveling for, you know, at worst five, seven days, that's definitely something I'm gonna to need to change over. All right, up the back here, we've got some hygiene things. So just starting to think about uh, if, I, if I am traveling for a number of days, at some stage I'm gonna to need, to to need to go to the loo. So a little trowel there, just a slide out trowel from sea to summit, and you can dig a hole there. And I've actually stored all my toilet paper in the handle there. And then just some wet wipes, sanitizing wet wipes. Use on your hands afterwards or on your bum if you want, I don't mind. Um, okay, so some specific stuff. I'm working in and around a city and a big city. Uh, I'm looking at the trends at the moment. We've seen riots and things like that happen throughout the world. So that's always on my mind. That's something I wanna think about, uh, protecting myself, protecting other people in, in those sorts of environments. So to that end, I've actually got a version. I've got many, many different versions of riot gear. I've got full face masks, I've got gas masks, I've got everything in between. But this is my lightest, smallest version of this pack. And it just goes in this bag here. It's just a little off the shelf gas mask or gas filter with the filters. Uh, and then some, these are like tradey type uh, goggles, but they're just nice sealed goggles that will keep any gas or anything like that. So we're using those two in combination. Um, I should be not totally protected from things like CS gas, but it would uh, alleviate the effects of them or ameliorate the effects of those things significantly, enough that I'd be able to operate. And then lastly, or second lastly, uh, just some, this is just a, a day glow vest or a fluoro vest. Um, if I am on foot walking around and especially at night and I'm in a permissive environment, I want people to see me. So. It could be handy to have something like that so that you can attract attention to yourself, as well as things like lights and stuff like that, radios that you can call for help. Um, and then lastly, just up here, I've got a couple more spare uh, Bajar bags or waterproof bags, and I just keep them in the pack just in case uh, anything I need. I, I can actually fill these with water so I can have a lot of water storage. But I'm thinking more about clothing and especially if I've been somewhere in and around a riot and there has been CS gas, I always take a spare uh, set of clothing and then with the old pair that has been affected possibly by those riot control agents, I'll put it in there and seal it in there and throw that in my pack. So then that doesn't then leak out and affect everyone else if I jump into a car. So that's basically, oh sorry, we've got some gloves here too. So these are PIG gloves. Um, tactical gloves for the tactical people and uh, Leatherman's there as well. So any sort of multi-tool I think is quite a handy thing to, to have on you at any time. I usually just carry it in my pocket, but I'll have another one here in my actual bag. So as I said, these will be separated over those two bags. This is repacking. This is something that you really want to think about guys, uh, that don't just sit and forget when it comes to things like uh, your grab bags. Don't just be like, Yep, I've, I've built that and I never have to think about it again. It gets just chucked in the back of the car and it's gone. Um, because you, you might use stuff. I, I quite often, you know, pull mine out and I'll use the first aid kit on somebody who needs it or myself generally. 
Um, I might get hungry, so I'll pull out some of the food. When you do that, make sure that you go back into your kits and actually refit them. It's really, really important that you're testing your gear, that you're constantly going over your gear and refreshing things and making sure that it's all A-OK. -okay. So that's it for today. Um, if you've got any questions on anything, feel free to shoot them through to me. There's probably a couple of things that I've missed that as I start packing, I'll um, chuck in. But if you think of anything that I have missed, please feel free to chuck it into the comments. I'd love to hear it. Uh, also, love, I love seeing pictures of other people's grab bags. So if you've got one that you filled out and you think yours is the best and, and you know mine's just average, um, send it through to me. I love seeing that sort of stuff, guys. But until next time, Semper Pratus.